Mayday relay, mayday relay, mayday relay. All ships, all ships, all ships. Color coats radio, color coats radio. Following received from Lebanese ship Adelphotus 2, Oscar Delta, Delta Tango at 0227 GMT. That was the SOS message relayed by Colourcoats radio station in the early hours of the 20th of January 1963. It was the start of one of the most dramatic rescue operations ever carried out on the northeast coast. The 6,000 ton freighter Adel Fotis II was on her way in ballast from Middlesbrough to Antwerp. In a fierce 60 mile an hour gale, her steering failed. The SOS signal was flashed at three o'clock in the morning, and then the stricken ship, with 22 men on board, struggled to the Tyne. In the harbor mouth, huge waves flung her against the black midden rocks. And then, as she was being swept onto the herd sands at South Shields, Tynemouth Coast Guard called out the volunteer life-saving companies of South Shields and Sunderland. The rescue operation was on. From the start, suspense. In the dark, it was difficult to assess the situation. When the ship grounded just after four o'clock, those on board did not know where they were or that there was help at hand. The rescuers on the shore could not contact them, and the first rocket line was not properly secured on the ship and had to be cast off. Frustration for the men who labored so hard in a gale that made it difficult to stand and lashed their faces with stinging sand. When dawn broke, the plight of the ship was plain to see. Hard fast between the groin and the pier at South Shields, Adel Fotis II was rocking on her keel as the waves swept over her. The Greek crew on the Lebanese steamer could now see the shore and safety only 200 yards away. But between them lay a stretch of sea that boiled with the fury of the wind. Then another rocket line was fired. The line secured, the big haul now started. It was the first time either life-saving brigade had taken part in a rescue since the end of the war. But their efforts didn't flag for one moment, and soon the first man was making the hazardous trip to land in a breacher's ball. Helping hands were waiting. Even so, every step was an effort. Policemen ran the rescue up the beach to keep their circulation going. Some of the lifesavers had the special job of grabbing the seamen in the freezing water, and the same rescuers went in time and again. One of them had to be taken to hospital after his long ordeal in the waves. One of the Greek seamen collapsed unconscious in the water and had to be dragged up onto the beach. quick first aid treatment. After a few minutes, the seaman recovered. The wind was so strong that the life-saving men had to act as human anglers to hold down their breaches for rigging. The rescue of the 22 seamen, including their skipper, took two hours. The constant hauling on the heavy ropes began to wear down the determined life-saving companymen and spectators were called upon to help. Some of them were women. The minutes seemed like hours, but the operation went on.
handshake of one of the rescued seamen shows only too well their thankfulness to be safe after seven hours of peril. One of the seamen brought the ship's mascot ashore and he too went off by ambulance to the Ingham Infirmary in South Shields. At 10 minutes to 11 yesterday morning, all the crew of the crippled ship were on shore, tired, wet, but safe. This was due to the courage and determination of many people. The voluntary life-saving companies, the Coast Guard, the police, ambulance men, and observers who joined them. From Lebanese ship, Adel Foten to Oscar Delta Delta Tango. Instantly, that things would never be the same again. Just let me hear some of that rock!